best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Birch. Hey everybody, this is Birch. This may be an entertaining video for some of you. I don't, I don't know. You know, some of the people who comment uh, and, and want me to answer certain questions, they don't show up then later to kind of support some of the questions that they ask. Uh, but still, all the same, uh, this is going to be kind of a different video. Because, uh, and I didn't realize I was doing this, in fairness. Uh, but when I normally do videos, you have to understand I'm coming from the perspective of, you know, almost like a consultant. This is what I think is going to result from these actions. So this isn't necessarily what I would like. You know, one of the first lessons you will learn as a consultant is that it doesn't really matter what you like or what you want. It matters what's going to be a successful business strategy. And that's a very different thing from, you know, a, your personal opinion. Your personal opinion matters a hell of a lot less in that scenario. Your job is to figure out the right business course, the right strategy to actually, you know, get to success. So I, I mentioned all that because I, here's what, what dawned on me. So I, was, I did this video, the Netflix, uh, did, you know, Netflix's struggles and Netflix, you know, make no mistake about it, is absolutely having some issues right now. I said it's bad for comics. But here's the thing. That's not actually what I believe. That's the fact, if we're talking about the comics business and what's going to happen with the industry and what's going to happen with investment and what's going to happen with companies and what's going to happen with a lot of the debt that's been piled up with a lot of these companies, that it is going to be bad for comics. Uh, so I'm giving you a consultant answer. And it, it almost took a, like a shake to get me to realize. It's like, you know what? Most of the videos I do is somewhat of an unbiased opinion of what's actually going to happen or not happen. But oftentimes, I'm making an argument against what I would like to have happen. Does that make any sense, or does your head hurt? I apologize. But uh, So let me come at that, uh, that entire situation again. Netflix is, uh, is, you know, basically has problems, because for a long time, it's been telling its investors, it's been telling the people who are involved in that company, a story. And that story is that subscribers are, you know, this uh, kind of hockey stick. A hockey stick is when, you know, the curve starts accelerating. So you gain 10 users and then 25 users and then 50 users and then 500 users and then 10,000 users. And it grows exponentially faster. That's called a hockey stick in business. Netflix has been selling the story of, hey, we're going to invest our money. We're going to take debt ahead of growth, ahead of subscribers. But surprise, surprise, economic downturn, people were really being a little bit more cautious about their spending, It uh, they're pulling back, and some of these subscribers are going the other way. Now, a number of you came in and say, go woke, go broke, and all the rest. But the, the, look, the challenge is Netflix has been as woke as it is today for five years. This is not a new development, and they were gaining subscribers during a lot of those woke years, and now they're not. The problem is not woke because they've been woke for a long time. If the problem was woke, they would have been losing subscribers five years ago. It's not that people woke up one day and be like, holy shit, what are we doing? It's too woke. No, they woke up and go, my God, I'm paying $250 on subscription services. I've got to pull back. That's what happened. Now, if they had compelling content on there, if they had more stuff that people were interested in, then people would go, yeah, I, I don't want to spend $250, but I'm not going to let go of Netflix because it's too valuable for me. That, you know, and what is it going to take to do that? I don't know. Get a season of The Witcher out faster. Get Cobra Kai season five or whatever the hell it's on out faster. I mean, there's they get Stranger Things. What is it three now or four? Get, get that season out faster. The problem is the shows that Netflix really, that people really love are coming out too far in queue between. And so people are starting to say, you know what, I'll just let, I'm just going to cancel the subscription and I'll come back in a year or two and, you know, then I'll binge this stuff again. But I'm, I'm not going to hang out and wait two years for Stranger Things season four. You know, I'm not interested. That, that's that's what's going on. Now, I, and, and bluntly, I'll, I'll say this, if you believe that the entire reason Netflix is failing is because they, they put out one too many shows that features gay people, then you're an idiot. Sorry. Downvote as much as you want, you, you retard. You know, you're an idiot. 
But that, that's not what's happening. There's been plenty of that stuff for a long time. It's all about money. However, my argument in that video was, this is going to be bad for comics. And it will. I say that because, from a consultant point of view, there are a lot of companies that have been completely selling their value on, hey, invest in us, and uh, we will... Uh, you know, we will actually do good work with you. Uh, if, if you invest in us, then you can get a good return because our shows are going to be on Netflix. That's what they've sold. Problem is, um, they are, you know, now, now as Netflix is failing, that argument doesn't work. And a large amount of small independent comic companies have a massive amount of debt or at least significant amount of debt. And now they have no, no outlet. They, they can't draw a you know, a graph, a financial return graph that suggests that they're going to do better someday because of all these Netflix shows. That that well is drying up and it's going to hurt them. So from a consultant, consultant point of view, consultative, I don't know. Anyway, um, bad news. However, let me speak to you not as a consultant, but as Perch, the guy who would like good... Uh, which is not even my name, which is weird, but the guy who likes, for those of you who know my name, you, you, you're with me. Um, as a guy who would like good comics, let me tell you a different story. The Netflix, uh, the comics financial plan slash lie, that going away is awesome for comics because what that's going to do, and it's going to be painful, and it's going to be hard, it's going to basically put a number of these small companies out of business. They are going to die. And that's sad because some of these people are good, hardworking people. And, you know, the bigger companies like your Marvels and DCs, etc., they're going to be okay. They're going to hang out and figure it out. Uh, but these small companies, a bunch of them are about to go out of business. Over the next 18 months, you're going to see several of them consolidate and die. And why I say that's good for comics is because this entire business plan, from my own personal point of view, is shit. The idea that uh, these comic companies can kind of hawk debt in exchange for a Netflix deal, it's, uh, it's, it's awful. This is a bad business plan. This is a business plan that is destined for failure. This is something that is, uh, is only going to prop up uh, bad business practices. The comic industry needs a good dose of, of real business medicine, which is, hey, if you don't have a viable product to sell, you shouldn't be borrowing money. This is almost like, a, you know, an 18-year-old getting a credit card. You shouldn't borrow against money you don't have. That's where the comic industry is at right now, and that's a good dose of medicine they should have. Does that mean that some good people and some good comics are going to wash out during this period? Absolutely. There's going to be some very, very good people and good, good industries of, of really nice, wonderful individuals that are going to not be able to survive this process. And that's sad. However, the only reason they were surviving is because they were borrowing against debt and they had a business plan that was not viable. And it's a shame, it's sad, but it's probably healthy. Uh, I think that's good. Look, I do not enjoy superhero comics that spend page after page after page of characters eating lunch and having besties and all that other bullshit that's not a superhero comic. That's not what anyone wants to read. And the market clearly defines that. Now, I have done plenty of videos explaining why they do that, what they're thinking, what the psychology is. I'm trying as a consultant to explain to you why it is that goes on. But let's all face it. Those comics suck ass. And nobody wants to actually read them. Okay, you know, that, that's the truth. It, it is the honest truth. I am definitely in favor of business practices and plans that work. And God knows, I wish there was more of those in comics. I wish to death that Marvel and DC would actually quit screwing around and actually make a imprint, a genre of their comics that is all in on the LGBTQ community. I, I do. You're like, what? What is he talking about? Look, manga has the boys love BL, uh, the, this entire genre that makes a shitload of money. Right now there is a comic, a manga, out there called Dick Fight Island. And it is on pace right now to outsell every single Marvel graphic novel that has been produced over the last 10 years. No kidding. Go look, go look it up on Amazon. Dick Fight Island is about to beat 
anything that the X office has done in the last year. It is gay as hell. And But the difference is it's doing it right. So I would love for Marvel and DC to quit effing around with this entire process and just go all in. Create a, a LGBTQ label. Do it right. Hire people who actually know what they're doing. The problem is a lot of the people who are working in this industry, who are working in this space, are amateurs at this. They suck at this. They can't even get the thing that they want to do right, right. For God's sake, what are you doing? There's a lot of really talented comic writers, truly talented people that are being held back by moronic editors who are being paid too little, who do not give a shit about their jobs because they're being paid under $40,000, and they, nobody really cares whether you. I mean, when you're being paid that, who cares if you hang on to your job or not? Seriously. I see a lot of you in the comments like, well, they should care, or they should care about it for good pride reasons. Not pride as in the, the dumb comic that's going to come out once a year, but the pride is in, like, you should have a healthy respect for your job. I agree. You should. But, let, but come on. Most of the world doesn't work that way. You ever gone to, a, like, a Best Buy or a Walmart or a Target, and you run into the uh, guy who's working at the register who could not give a rat's ass about serving you properly? Yeah, when you pay somebody minimum, minimum wage, you're going to get some people who have good work pride, and they those people tend to excel and do well in life. And then you have other people who do not give a shit about their jobs, and they do poorly in life. And comics has a lot of that second group. That It's just the truth. What gets me is, is this entire argument about the, you know, the woke agenda and all that kind of stuff. Guess what? You're missing the super obvious. The super obvious is there's a bunch of people who are just bad at their job. Just fundamentally bad. Why do they have their job? Because they were hired by somebody else who's bad at their job. And this is what happens if you get too many people in a comic business who are bad at their job. They hire in their idiot friends, and then pretty soon you have an entire company full of morons. And that's what you got. You've got talented, talented creators. Some of the people I've interviewed, some legends in the industry. You've got Walt Simonson, who, hey, he would love to do a Wonder Woman comic from D.C. You know what would be really great? is if the idiot editor over there would pick up the phone and respond to Simonson. Wouldn't that be nice? Seems like it would be smart. Simonson's rate at this point is equivalent to people who are putting out trash work at the big two. Why did the people who put out trash work get the job and Simonson doesn't? Because there's a moron making that hiring choice. That's why. It's not because they're trying to check a diversity checkbox. That would entail that the person doing that has some kind of strategy in mind. These people do not. They're idiots. Now, that's not to say everyone in the comic industry is stupid. They're not. There's really good people out there every day trying to do their job and do it the best they can. But there's other people out there who honestly do not give a shit about this business, want to just kind of have a good time, get high at the end of the day, I, or and, and this isn't even me guessing. Most of them post this. Look, Chris Conroy, every time you post on your Twitter feed how you'd rather be on mushrooms than answering emails, look, I don't need to invent if you're good at your job or bad at your job. You're telling all of us how bad you are at your job. You suck at your job. What? Is this a surprise to anyone? Come on. This Netflix uh, whole situation is really bad for a lot of independent comics. It is. However, in the grand scheme of things, from the first perspective, this is probably great. This is going to shake out a lot of people who have not been taking this business seriously. They're going to go away. And hopefully, if they go away, a lot of these moron YouTubers who spend their life posting goofy-ass headlines about everything is going to shit and all the comics suck, and they you know put a like a sad emoji face with crying tears with a half baked picture of Kathleen Kennedy. Those people can also go away because you suck too. Look, uh, the comic industry is something worth protecting, not because I would not I want Joe Casada or Jim Lee or other people who absolutely suck at their jobs to keep their jobs, but because I love comics. And it is not dead. There are still good comics being produced every month, and I want those people to succeed. The way for those people to succeed is a lot of the idiots have to get out of the way. And those idiots, uh, we all know who they are. Everybody knows. So, you know, we can make video after video after video talking about how, you know, oh, my God, they made Green Arrow's son gay. Or what? No, he's not gay. He's asexual. Oh, there's a new f news flash for you. Comic character doesn't, has, has no interest in sex. Woohoo! Great. 
that's going to sell absolutely dick all of comics. I, I mean, what a waste of everything. Oh, oh, amazing. Some people can believe they're represented in the comic. Come on. You know what even better is put out a kick-ass story. You don't, you don't have to, I mean, look, you don't have to have these characters doing anything in the comic. I, I mean, the, the, here's the crazy lie in all this. You can have the most queer represented story you can possibly think of in comics. If it's a good story, it's going to sell well. People who are straight as an arrow are going to buy that comic because it's a good goddamn story. If the story sucks, it's not going to sell well. Yes, even if the story is great and it has queer elements, and there will be some jackass on, on YouTube who will be talking about bisexual lighting or some other dumb crap, but if the story is good, guess what? Still going to do well. Here's the crazy thing. You know the authority? It sold really well. Even though there were, good Lord, I mean, more than half of that team were, could be representing the LGBTQ spectrum. But more than half. The comic sold great. The comic was as liberal, as Democrat as it comes. The comic sold great. It sold great because the stories were engaging and fun to read. I, I, I know. This is the big mystery of all of comics. Amazing. You make a good story, people will buy it. Why, why, why are any of us confused by this at this point? It's easy. Make good story, people buy. Make shitty story, people do not buy. All for Everything else we want to talk about comics, that, that's it. So there's Perch, the perspective, is I would like good comics to read. To have good comics, I would like people to stop dicking around and actually produce something meaningful. And guess what? There are lots of people doing it. The reason why I, 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 you know what, I won't bring other people. The, the reason I interview people I do, and I, you know, look at some of the live streams, look at the guests I've had on there. These are good people. Very good people. I do videos with lots of people who are good people. I guarantee you they have different beliefs than I do, and I don't give a shit because they put out good comics. They put out good stories. That's all that matters to me. That's it. So, yeah, Netflix, it's a shame that it's, uh, it's, it's in trouble. It's a big shame. That's going to take some people who are good, you know, reasonable people with a good heart, and it's going to put them out of business. Unfortunately, a lot of those people who have a good heart, they're not, they're, you know, they, they were living off of a fantasy, a fantasy of a business model that was not sustainable. And every now and then, Good people fail at business because they just don't crack the code. They don't, they, don't, they don't have the right answer to make it work. And unfortunately, that's the future. So I'm doing the opposite video of what I did before. Netflix having troubles. The idea of comics being this gateway to streaming, and that's how the entire business model and financial thing is going to work. It's great for comics. It's great. Because it's going to force some people to button up their suspenders, whatever you want to, whatever analogy you want to use. It's going to force people to actually get to work and produce good value. The end. There you go. So if you listen to my videos and you like to bitch about, hey, Perch, some jackass the other day is like, oh, Perch is always defending the big two. Oh, fuck you. Sorry. I have to get it out every now and then, right? Sorry if you've got kids in the car. Hopefully you've turned it out long before then you get in this crazy rant. But yeah, a lot of times I do videos, I do them from a consultant point of view. This is what this means. I'm an analyst. If you want to hear my personal view, my personal view is super, super fucking simple. Make good comics I want to read, and I will give you my cash. The end. Thanks for listening.